Hello, everybody, again. Um, yeah, I'm sorry it took me so long to get that uh, uh, review for last or for Let's Kill Hitler up. Um, anyway, I'm going to review Night Terrors now, and I've been trying to work on camera positioning because my new room is really... I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, um... <clears throat> Mark Gatiss wrote this episode, uh, and I thought he did a very good job, and it, it, it was good because, uh, I should turn off the backlight, shouldn't I? One second. That's better. Um, I think one of the reasons why this episode was so, uh, so kind of fun to watch was it had a little bit of that feel from, that we got from earlier Doctor Who episodes, uh, <clears throat> even as far, you know, you go, go to the, 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 uh, Russell T. Davis era, you know, it had a lot of that feel to it, you know, it was in, it was, took place in London, and there was just a strange kid doing strange things, and strange stuff was happening, and, you know, it was very kind of, it's what the reboot started out as, and, you know, although I do love, you know, them going to different planets, and now that there's definitely a better, um, budget and more technology these days than there were in the original series, not every planet looks like the same rock quarry. I think it's good for them to kind of return back to Earth and, you know, give somewhere that everyone somewhere that we can relate to. You know, and so I thought it was I thought it was good and I thought it was good that they came back to England and kinda of came back to the roots of the reboot. Anyway, um I'm just really too excited about that, I guess. Uh, anyway, I thought it was really kind of uh, a, a good storyline, a good premise. Um, as some, as a kid who kind of uh, grew up having these night terrors, and uh, I wasn't quite as pantophobic as the kid in the episode, which thanks Doctor Who for reminding me about the term pantophobia. That was just awesome. Uh, I knew there was a term for it, and I used to know it, but... I remember it now, and that was that was a great little quip, which I actually used during marching band today. Go figure, I do marching band. Anyway, um, where was I? ADHD is so much fun. Uh, one of the reasons why I think this episode had the feel of the original series was because there were kind of these scenes where they just kind of dragged out relationship build-up and dragged out character development that really didn't need it that much. So, um... That was very kind of uh, a good throwback to the Russell T. Davis era, where Davis always had these really kind of long scenes, and where he started, where he was building relationship between two characters, or you know, kind of introducing a character, and that got it would get it would be a little tiring. Um, one of the girls from Tardis Tacular mentioned that uh, this would have been a really good two-parter. <clears throat> Mainly because uh, he did a good job of building up a lot of suspense near the end, and then just ended it like that. And it was, you know, I kind of agree, but at the same time, I feel like it would have been a really drawn out second part, um, unless he had changed the reasoning why the kid was having the night terrors. The dolls were terrifying. Uh, I thought, <clears throat> and their songs that they were singing the whole time, like that was just scary. Um, Dolls are always creepy. I think that's, you know, I think a lot of people can agree that when you look at a child's doll, a lot of times they're really, really creepy. So, you know, it, it is always fun when writers play on, uh, on, on our fear of these just little stuffed creatures. Um, and the Amy doll was really kind of, it was cool. Um, gave her the red hair and everything. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting how everybody ended up being sucked into the world uh, in the cupboard. Uh, it was, you know, when, when the old lady was sucked in, I thought that was very kind of, that very much reminded me of the old uh, Russell T. Davies era where the, the, you know, budget wasn't that great. And I know Doctor Who's budget still isn't quite as good as some TV shows, and that's kind of the beautiful quirk of it all. But, um... I do, you know, I did kind of love how cheesy it looked when she was sucked in. How even cheesier it looked when the landlord was sucked in. Uh, and then, of course, when the doctor and the father were um, sucked in and it was just, you know, swirling lights. Uh, I thought Rory had a lot of... I don't know. I kind of felt like Rory 
uh, regressed in this episode where, you know, we've seen really kick-ass Rory for several episodes and, you know, he, the doctor's wife, he was a badass. The, uh, uh, definitely in Good Man's Goes to War, he was a badass and he's, he's continued to just constantly increase with how cool he is. And then this episode, I kind of feel like he regressed back to the, the sniveling, terrified idiot. Um, which, I mean, it, it is, it, it's the Rory quirk, and I get it, and I, I like it to some degree. But, um, I, I don't believe that, that I, I believe he's kind of evolved since then. Uh, that's all I can really say about this episode. Um, I'm still getting over being sick. Ah, uh, it's fun. Anyway, uh, next week's episode looks kind of interesting. I, you know, I don't know, I, I'm kind of done with Amy as a character. I feel like it's very much the Amy Pond show at this point. You know, even River's connected to Amy Pond, and everybody, everything's constantly revolving around Amy Pond, and... I don't know that I like that too much, although I feel like it's kind of cool because it's turning the tables on what last season was Amy's choice, now it's Rory's choice, and I don't know, maybe I'll appreciate Amy again after this episode, I'm not sure, we'll see. Anyway, um, I'll talk to you next week.